Hey, everybody. Welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 301 being recorded on May 21st, 2014. I'm Ryan Trout. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. And I'm Alan Malventano. We have an Alan looking back. at the wrong camera. Oh, Alan looked at the wrong camera again. I was looking at the monitor. <laughs> it's all right. It happens. It's his I'll first time it here. Out. It's his first time here. Um, so did he uh, look at that prematurely? He looked prematurely. I did, I, and I also a premature lookeration moved an invisible boom. Yeah. So uh, Alan's in the studio, which means it's one less person on Skype. So that's always a plus. Uh, we still got Jeremy. We still got Josh. We're still rolling strong here. Um, and uh, how's the move going? Are you done yet? You I never am going to move again. But never. boy, he's taken his fiber. <laughs> <laughs> he made the big move, so yeah. it's a lot better. The big move. Now you feel a little bit more. You feel a little empty inside. You feel relaxed. You know? <laughs> but see, now the thing is, he's actually leaving tomorrow morning to drive all the way back to San Antonio. I am. You're going to take your mother-in-law's car back. Yes. You're going to finish cleaning out crap, and then you're going to bring and get a cat two cars and get. Well, we didn't really need to get into that, but you're going to oh. pick up two cats. Pick and up you're going to drive back here on like Tuesday. In two separate cars. In two separate cars again. Yes. At the same time. At, at the same time. Yes. Well, nice. he will only be driving one of them, thankfully. His wife will Well, the cat the was going to drive the other one. Ah, yeah. two of I'm yeah. really excited to hear the stories about having the cat in the car for 18 hours. They're going to be in my car. Okay. See, I'm really looking forward Not to this. Not my wife's car. Uh, so uh, thanks for joining us. Um, uh, we record this show, this wonderful PC Perspective podcast, on Wednesdays at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. And uh, we uh, want you to join us live, right? If you're listening to this after the fact on audio version or if you're on our YouTube channel watching the video, that's awesome. But we want you to join us live. We have a lot of fun pre and post show. Uh, and you can do that by going to pcpercom slash live. But if you don't, you know, if you're, maybe you forget the schedule or you want to check things out or you want to get a reminder, if you go to pcper.com slash subscribe, you can fill out this little form, give us your name, your email address, and we will send you a notification usually anywhere from five to 50 minutes before we actually start the show. So this is your indication that, hey, it's time to head over to pcper.com slash live and we'll keep you updated there. So you can hang out with the guys in the chat room, talk it up, learn stuff. Sometimes we win things. Well, sometimes we give things away to winners. Uh, and also we're always notif- winning. We're all, we're all winners on the show, clearly. Uh, like earlier today, we had a live stream with uh, Leon from Gigabyte. We give away a Z97 Gaming 3 motherboard on that event. And if you had been on our subscriber list, you would have known about that event. You would have known. You would have had your chance. And actually, what was the, the secret word? The secret word was 3, T-H, but Ooh. you had to spell it out. Uh, which apparently confused some people. But um, <laughs> uh, the person who won the motherboard, actually it was his first time ever watching any of the live events. So hopefully he signed up for the subscriber list after that. And uh, maybe he's watching here. Actually, he was based in the UK, so he's probably asleep. It would be 4 a.m. He's probably never going to watch again because his he's already won. <laughs> <laughs> he's used the all that up. Yeah, 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 possibly. So uh, not, as a, not an exceptionally busy week this week. Um, but uh, we oh, have it's been busy. Well, not yeah, moving, whatever. In terms of hardware, not that busy. Uh, we had a couple of articles. One posted up by Sebastian, who is a uh, just the most. Uh, I, he's one. Well, actually, between him and Maury, probably the uh, two getting the most stuff done on the website. So we appreciate covering our asses for everything else while we put together a set and while Alan moved um, across the state and everything. So um, this review is of the Inwin nine hundred one. Mini ITX aluminum and glass case. This is uh, I haven't seen anything from Inwin in a while. Have you guys like? No. It's a it's a name you know from computer cases and and stuff. But I mean, this looks pretty good. Like just just the way you know the styling of it. Um, and, I really like his fake lifestyle magazine photo there. He did a, he did good, a good job. job. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That that looks like it could be in a catalog of some kind, right? Or an Apple ad. And that's his actual living room. I want to ask him. I'll ask him. He'll answer. I'm sure he's listening now. Like, do we? Does he always have those books there, or was that something <laughs> placed specifically for the shot? Because he's gonna, he's got an iPhone sitting on top of it, right? So it's a good contrast of old school and new school, with the the tattered book look. I'm pretty sure he what found the, the iPhone as a prop. He just found it. He, uh, yeah, he actually said that. Do you really? Yeah, that's not his uh, like actual iPhone. He just has like a pro- <laughs> he just has a prop iPhone. Weird. You wouldn't know anything about that, Alan, huh? No, I would. not Yeah. Um, so uh, from Inwin, the the tagline, uh, the description of this, it's a 
Inwin 901 is built to achieve perfect balance between aesthetic design and superior functionality in a mini ITX chassis. So this is a mini ITX design. Um, it does. Uh, two, it supports 200 millimeter power supplies, 300 millimeter graphics cards, which I'll need a translation for that to uh, metrics I understand, and 120 millimeter external mounted liquid cooling radiator. So we'll, you'll be able to use a self-contained water cooler if it's a 120. Uh, rad size and CPU heat sinks up to 130 millimeters. So it's mini ITX. You can see it kind of looks through here and you can see like the you get this brushed aluminum finish down the center, but you've got glass on the side of it. And this is the this is the rear here where you can do the fans and exhaust and your power supply mount down there. It's a pretty nice looking design. Tempered glass handle with care. You can see we've got our uh, glass on both sides actually which is which is pretty nice uh rubber feet on the bottom to prevent uh vibration and scratching and anything to go along with that uh, but it it seemed to perform really well and it you could fit a lot of stuff in here this is something that i really like about cases and how they've been changing over the last few years is mini itx doesn't mean sacrificing stuff you have to sacrifice sli or to sacrifice crossfire of course uh, but you can get you know, in this case, he's got a, a high-end Intel, I think probably, a, you know, a Haswell or an Ivy Bridge base part in there. Uh, and you can get a 300 millimeter. What would that translate to? Did you look that up for me? 300 millimeter? Yeah. What is that in inches? Like real numbers. Uh, you got the Google. Okay, I'll go. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and you can see how... 12 it, inches. 12 inches? Okay. So that's big how enough. big are wafers these days? Uh, 12 inches. Mm, good call. 11.8. Good call. Says the Google. So, if, for example, a uh, GTX Titan is 10.5 inches. So you'd be able to fit a GTX Titan in here if you so desired. And you can see how the water cooler mounts. It's actually, it mounts outside the back of it. And you can see how he actually shows with a 120 as well as with a 240 how uh, it actually mounts on there. So that's uh, it's pretty nice. And it looks like you've got a couple of different options on that as well, too. So uh, interesting case you can see he's got like a corsair 750m power supply in there there's full-size graphics cards ssd that's pretty cool yeah it looks Mounting like you can even go a little bit longer on the power supply and still manage to yeah squeeze yeah. it in there uh, you know good photography here good job doing this review well done mounting look he's got his vertex force it's a good thing you finally hired some professionals yeah. yeah people who are productive yeah just jeremy and sebastian and maury that's that's all we got anymore. I'm not doing anything. Al's not doing anything. Josh's no. not doing anything. <coughs> and Ken, sorry. I, I, I could just make this business. black right now. And, Ken's, and Ken's, Ken's really not doing anything. Uh, so uh, it did get a PC Perspective Gold Award. Prestigious. This is prestige right here. I expect to see this plastered all over their marketing material going forward. Um, it is, I guess, a little bit expensive. Uh, $189 MSRP. So 179 bucks if you look at that, it on That uh, is tempered Lake. glass. It is tempered glass. And you got to pay attention to the shipping materials. Because you know how UPS and FedEx like to toss around those like cases. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Oh, this probably yeah. doesn't have anything important in it. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> so check out that review. And then also the other uh, one, of, one of the other productive people on the team, Maury, posted a review of the MSI Z97 Gaming 7 motherboard. This is one of their higher-end options um for the new z set z97 line of motherboards hey guess what it's black and red there are a lot of black and red z97 motherboards coming out from yep. all the different vendors uh gigabyte asus msi it's a thing now um you've got your clear cmos button you've got dual bios you've got uh, uh oc genie essentially right there you've got look at that red ethernet port it's red they also have eight USB 3.0 ports on the back, which is kind of nice. Yeah. In fact, they only have two legacy USB 2.0 ports. So the legacy ones are the red. red. As is the PS2. That probably indicates, uh, probably not on the PS2, but the red USB probably indicates charging capability of some kind, or they just like the color. One or the other. PS2 must be overclocked. It's overclocked PS2, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the Gaming 7 series is going to give you, uh, you've got stuff like the Qualcomm Atheros Killer Nick. If you're into that, you've got two HDMI outputs, a display port output. Uh, you've, you've even got a clear CMOS button on the back panel as well, so you can access it while it is inside a case. You have um, three full-length PCI Express ports, but obviously, you know, you're really only looking at two-card SLI um, or Crossfire, or you start going on down to by 8 by 4 by 4 And the by 4 on this 
last slot is uh, through the uh, the chipset. Chipset. Right? So you probably you probably actually don't want to do that. Um, otherwise, a, a really good layout. They've got their as as seemingly every motherboard vendor does now. They have their onboard audio uh, using different capacitors than the rest of the motherboard. Kind of audio quality audio um, bend capacitors and then they've got you can see this line kind of running up the side of it and they're all isolation they're all yeah they're all isolating the sound channels from the rest of the motherboard right you try to remove noise so you try to noise from the like electrical noise from the board ring yeah and uh you know does it work josh in your experience um Yes not, and no. Not particularly on this implementation because you haven't seen this board, but in general. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I've been working on that gigabyte board for about seven years. Um, <laughs> and it, it is a clean implementation for the most part. But when you do things like open up the optical drive, you can actually hear some more cracking, um, you know, if you're wearing headphones. Huh. Uh, that in like a sound card, you might not. Yeah. But. Yeah. Also, you might not have most. an optical drive. Okay. Uh, I guess I should get, I should cut the cords and. I did. I did uh, when I uninstalled the old video card today. We uninstalled a uh, IDE based optical drive, as well. But it was an EVGA branded op, uh, IDE cable. Rounded. Rounded, right? Like you know. Oh yeah. You know, so it was nice and so clean. So little did you know that Jacob started as an intern uh, cutting those cables and rounding them did he really no but it's a great story it's a good story we should keep that one that's a good yeah. idea um you can also see in this picture here the uh it has an m.2 port you can see it's got support for all three lengths of potential m.2 uh, sata not no wait hold on there's so many things i screwed up today m.2 ssds yes that exist that exists there uh, another angle on that and of course the oc genie button OCGD. So it seems like everybody's moving to that three, three pegs with the movable standoff for the M2. Well, I, th I think they have to, right? Because I think that's the standard. Well, that's is, well. Is I mean, they, different I, sizes. I was worried that they were just kind of like, all right, you're supposed to use the small one, or you're supposed to use the big yeah. one. But I mean, this obviously takes up more board space, so they probably would like to not have to do it, right? Yeah. So um, good on them for for keeping it that way. Uh, now, in terms of storage here, this motherboard does not have SATA Express. It has eight SATA ports in the back here. You know, there's no SATA Express option there. Which How come nobody ever just uh, calls it sex? SATA ex exp well, sex. Because it doesn't really work out that way. Because, you know, those. look at the size of those sex ports. No. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know. Double headed sex ports. If you're no. looking for SEO. That might work out pretty well if you get you want to get in the search engine hits. So you know the lack of SATA Express is interesting because almost every other board vendor, their kind of higher end options are including it. Yeah. Um, the argument would be that there aren't any SATA Express storage available, uh, storage options available yet. There are really not very many M.2 available yet either. Right. Uh, and they actually kind of use the same technology. Right. Mm -hmm. They use the same interface. So um, you know an M.2 can replace what a SATA Express was, or vice versa. Uh, and uh, I think for a desktop, to. I think for a desktop class board, you're more likely to do either uh, M.2 or you're more likely to do a PCI Express, just a full blown card. Right. You know, yeah. cause why try to wire a SATA Express cable to somewhere else just to plug it into a two and a half inch bay, for example, when yeah, you know, you get more storage and even more speed with the PCI Yeah, I don't know. Card. It just it depends on what storage options actually come out, right? Yeah. If SATA Express has adoption better than most for some reason, that would be, you know, that would make this board a little bit disappointing, but if it's not, then whatever you move on and you've got more SATA ports. So, yep. uh, here is Mori's standard install a giant ass heatsink on a motherboard to see if it fits test and success. Right there, you can see it's just barely squeaking over those dim those dim on. He really likes that heatsink. Well, you know, you got to have a test. Like, look at that. That's enormous. And that's so a full size ATX board too. We need to put one of those on a swivel and make it into a desk fan. That just <laughs> I think I think Maury's compensating for something. You think? Yeah, it's mm. unfortunate. Um, so in the review, he also goes over the bundled applications. He goes over the new uh, BIOS features, um, and obviously does a little bit of benchmarking. But motherboard benchmarking is something that's not really what it used to be right you know the performance is not going to be uh 
You don't variable. see big differences. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you do some overclocking testing, but it's mostly about what the features are, what the experience is. You know, so you're looking inside the, the the software, you're looking inside the BIOS itself. What kind of features does it add? What is it unique? What does it do in a unique fashion compared to what you know ASUS and Gigabyte and the other companies are doing? And uh, if you want to see BIOS screenshots, boy, Mori has got you covered. Tons of options there. So if you're looking for anything in particular, look at that. Look at that. Keeps going. Keeps going. There's a whole other page of this stuff, guys. Look. Look at that. This is actually. That cool reminds thing. me of that hardware workshop that we went to that one time, and they spent 20 minutes going over every single BIOS. I wasn't at setting. that one, so I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you were. Uh, was I, I think was, it was AMD, and they had or they had uh, one of their oh, big overclockers there. Oh, at our workshop. There. Hmm. At our workshop. Yes. Oh yes, yes. They were doing an overclocking demonstration. AMD was, and it was a little slow. I think I'll say a little, a little slow. Not what you want to hear about an overclocking. Yeah, it, well, it should go yeah, fast. That's true. That's true. This is actually cool, right? So inside ClickBIOS, it'll tell you like which SATA ports are being utilized, uh, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Right. Uh, they so they do some cool stuff there. So uh, I, I would check this out. This motherboard, pretty sweet little motherboard. Let me let me let me go through all the bio screenshots again, and. Uh, uh, let me see what the, the pricing is interesting on this. We haven't yet seen Z97 motherboards that kind of exploded in price like we did with the Z87. Uh, this is $189 on Amazon, which I think is fairly reasonable for uh, a higher end option for yeah. MSI. They're going to have their Empower board. Uh, I think I think that's actually on the way to Mori now, so he'll have a review of that up in the not too distant future. Um, so that will be, you know, their flagship. It'll probably have 19 PCI Express slots or something. <laughs> um, but this is a this is a, a a great board for somebody who's just like building a system and is and is ready to go. All right. So the the weaknesses that he listed here, the lack of SATA Express, that CMOS battery placement. Oh, but geez, I'm gonna how ask, dare they? I'm gonna ask Maury where the best spot is for a CMOS battery, and I'm gonna make. Well, it's every, gotta be in the edge so that the giant ass heatsink doesn't block it. It's gotta be like the bottom left corner. Right, yeah, and and I'm gonna make sure every motherboard vendor puts it in that spot going forward. Uh, yeah, and then uh, just I mean, a minor knock on the manual, but the, I guess the the only thing that kind of spec wise is the lack of SATA Express, and you can decide on whether or not that's really uh, a strong enough negative for you to to con to consider or I'm, not consider this board. I'm pretty storage nutty, and I wouldn't would even I wouldn't make that a make or break decision yeah. right now. Yeah. I would if I was looking at that motherboard, I would still get it. Cool. Yeah. All right, let's talk about some other stuff that happened this week. Uh, this is an interesting thing. I don't know if you saw this, Josh, uh, because you like sound stuff. Sometimes. You like sound stuff? The Creative Labs announces Sound Blaster E1 and E3. And this is, it's, it is, as Scott wrote this up for us, it's built as a headphone amplifier with battery power. And they claim to support 600 ohm headphones. Is that a lot? Uh, that's the, uh, essentially the highest ohm rating you're going to see ever. in any kind of high-end headphone. So here, it's pretty high. Let me, let me read this, what, what Scott wrote, because this is it's it's an interesting product. and I, it, Both the E1 and E3 can be used as an external sound adapter for PCs and Macs. Uh, they have um, signal-to-noise ratios of 106 and 110, respectively. Um, and you can attach it to USB to your system, right? So they include ASIO drivers, which are especially useful, though all not uh, not uncommon for professional recording software, which is nice. So that's an interesting thing, right? You can have an external USB. Um, everything changed. I don't. It's not easy being green. <laughs> what? What? Uh, <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> so you can use it as an external, like if you have a laptop, right? And they kind of crummy, yeah. sound cards. Now you can bring this and and it's powered battery powered and you can have a, a good listening experience but they go off and do something different um it's usb hookup can attach not just just pcs and mac but also android and ios mobile devices so it has while it does have bluetooth for ios 5 and android 3.1 it can be used as a wired external sound card over usb on android 4.2 uh, using USB streaming over Android open accessory protocol yep. and on iOS 7 plus using a lightning USB adapter. Yep. This allows users to bypass the built-in amps of their smartphones and tablets without Bluetooth compression. And okay. uh, the E1 is 69 bucks and the E3 is $169. Yeah. I mean, you can get a straight digital stream out of a, out of a lightning connector. So, it's so I'm going to watch yeah. my Netflix on my phone, yeah. but I'm unhappy with how it sounds. So I'm going to carry this around, too. 
<laughs> and well, but plug my the, the close up in. doesn't do it justice. So when I'm in the bathroom, I'm going to be balancing. Is it? Are they large? I, I have they don't no look idea. Like how large I'm items, right? At the end, but I no. If you if you click through to the ad, click, yeah. you, you actually oh no, uh, scroll down to the guy that's got it clipped on. The close up doesn't really do it justice. It is tiny. It is small. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, I'll say so there it is in relation to the phone yeah. itself. But it's so still, it is I mean, significantly smaller than it looks. But yeah. it's plugged into the phone, and it's now you got like an extra. I think for a phone, it doesn't make any sense. Because, there are yeah. people who do this. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This, uh, I was thinking like, if you had high quality content on a tablet, and you. Watch it on that, and I was thinking, like, if you hook it up to HDMI it, through your receiver, it, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's not about video. It's I'm, not about video at all. You're just listening to music. It's let's say I have a three hundred dollar pair of two hundred fifty ohm headphones, mm -hmm. and am I really going to plug it into my iPhone? My, my first off, my iPhone can't drive it. Yeah, and that's true. Second okay. of all, it has a crappy DAC in it compared. So why don't I put FLAC files on it, use an app that can play FLAC files, and send the output okay. directly to the stack yeah. and have a really high-quality audio experience from my phone still? But you have to have yeah. those kinds of headphones is the thing. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. You know, it seems almost like it's kind of hipster that you're going to carry around a, a rotary <laughs> dial phone as well. With hey, your hey, hey, Josh, what was the reason you keep a Blu-ray drive in your computer? <laughs> Wasn't, still it, have laser wasn't, it, candy? wasn't it really high-quality audio? Audio quality, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So here's the E1. It's actually even smaller, uh, and there's a mostly naked guy there. I'll scroll past that's, that. Yeah, that's yeah. disturbing. Uh, so, th so this is a significantly smaller device, um, but interesting. <laughs> that's Battery really life is 25 picture. hours. <laughs> <laughs> With the picture of the half naked guy. He's <laughs> doing Most people do this, this, is is actually, audio. this is the picture of exactly who I think would use this product <laughs> for 25 <laughs> hours. For I were to look at it, right? <laughs> So you're telling me I don't want to hook up my earbuds to it, or what about my Beats by Drake? Would, okay, so definitely your Beats. So there are <laughs> definitely my well, Apple sells them. Well, wait a minute now. It's kind so, of so there have been like uh, there's this ah, I forget the name of it because I looked at it a really long time ago. But there's a guy that reviews specifically the audio quality of like iPhones and Android devices and stuff like yeah. that, right? So uh, and really hits himself up. to his camera and the uh, I don't know. And the iOS uh, devices are nine times out of ten, and especially like ten times out of ten with anything recent, is they're basically perfect audio quality. Yeah. It's like everything is like really close to ideal as far as the output op amps and everything in the circuitry. They just go with high high grade stuff. Okay. So, but there's a large reason to have a uh, an amp. Yeah. So if Ken, you, if you Ken have, wanted me, oh Jesus. Uh oh. Ken Where? Wanted, Ken sent me this link. To somebody's <laughs> portable audio setup. So what am I looking at? This is a. There's a. What phone is that behind that? Uh, you I can't tell. It's it, an Android phone of some kind. Yeah. It's. And then there's a USB out into this. What is this? The Pile Home. Is that? A, that's just an amp. Uh, it's Head probably a DAC because it's using. Okay. USB. Yeah. And then I see there. What headphones do we have here? I don't know. They don't look like high enough end headphones to bother, yeah, but okay. that's They're just an example of stuff. ATH IM O twos, whatever that. They're is. probably yeah. expensive. If I don't recognize them, I assume they <laughs> yeah. are. There, yeah, there's a company called Fio Fio F I I O that's kind of the leader, the lower end this of this stuff. Huh. Yeah. Audio Technica, they're telling me in the chat. So I thought that was a kind of an interesting little. Device, do you know, sound Creative Labs. They got to find something. Yeah, they got to find something to do. Somebody that needs sound cards, mm -hmm. uh, and this is essentially that. So. I mean, they essentially shot themselves in the foot ten years ago in PC audio. So they got to keep going baby. somehow. EAX. Let's uh, kill the competition and then stop all development. Well, they kind of. I mean, it was Windows that did it, right? It was Vista. Vista kind of killed. Well, I mean, they killed out. They killed off Ariel. Yeah. Five six years before. Mm. Vista came around. All right, I don't feel bad for him anymore. Then, yeah, yeah, fine. Um, so Tegra K1 is a chip, is a is an SOC from Nvidia uh, that uses Kepler based graphics in it. We looked at it. When was that? That was a long time ago, wasn't it? That was um, it was before CES when I first learned about it. They launched it at CES, right? They announced it at CES. So that was in January. Uh, well, they have just officially announced like the first product that's going to use it. It's not Shield 2. It's, um, it's um, Xiaomi. 
<laughs> Zion. Is it, Perfect. Is that, is that how you show me? Say, show, show me. Show, show me. Show me. My pad. Me pad. Really? I'm gonna strap on my me pad and go play volleyball. Tablet. And it's a tablet. Tablet. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Using the tagra. Kwan. Tigra. Kwan. Yeah, the tigra. Ugh. Forward. <laughs> um, so this is a tab. I'm not going to play it's this your video. Tumar it's your Tumar Malignant. So Tegra K1 is NVIDIA's new mobile processor, a little bit faster than a 9600 GT, which is kind of impressive to think about. Um, so this tablet uh, is... Can play crisis. You might not guess it based on the name. It's going to be sold in China. Uh, it's an 8-inch 2048 by 1536 screen uh, available in June in China, starting at about 240 USD, 16 gig version. Uh, and going up to 270 for the 64 gig version. Each version has two gigs of RAM, eight megapixel rear facing camera, and a five megapixel front facing camera. Now, NVIDIA was promoting this on their blog as well. So I've kind of already gotten to them and said, hey, I don't know where I can buy this, but you probably do. So please buy one and send it to us so we can actually test the yeah. device using your product. It would be nice to see. This is uh, the, the, remember we talked about. Integra K1 and its ability to support OpenGL, not OpenGLES. Uh, it does support OpenGLES, but it can support OpenGL as well. And uh, all the things that like the UT, the new Unreal Engine was using, and you could run DirectX, no, ugh, you could run OpenGL games on it. Um, and this is after now that we've seen Portal and Half-Life 2 ported to the Shield that uses Tegra 3? 4? 4. I'm losing track. Yeah, because this was supposed to be Tegra 5. That's right. Um, and this chip does support DirectX 11 and 12 in GPU compute languages. So, like, I'm, I'm just uh, really curious about battery life mm -hmm. because that's always been the knock on NVIDIA for their stuff uh, with with these parts. Uh, and But I'm also curious to see, like, what the gaming performance is like, what the graphics performance is like. And uh, hopefully somebody over in China will send me one. If you live in China... And you want to buy one of these and send it to me. What, what, me what I've heard about this company is that they they announce a product like this and they release it. And there are gigantic lines and they sell through. Uh -huh. And then they iterate into a next product. Like they don't... Like they don't ever continue to make yeah, it. They make yeah, they, one batch of it and go. Basically. They make huh. the same product for like a month and then quickly iterate on it. And huh. I think that's Weird. kind of a Chinese electronics. It's almost not thing. even worth reviewing. Well, it's the not up. Oh, like, no like I wouldn't well, review it as people yeah. could buy it because people here wouldn't be able to buy yeah, it. But true. it would be it, let's it, let's look at it as a reference platform almost and see it, it's got a nice high res screen, yeah. high performance uh, chip. Yeah, see what it does. It, it's it's a cool idea that if there are some minor faults that people find on the device, that they just fix them instantly and release a new version. Like that's that, that's a yeah. cool premise. It's 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 interesting. Don't spend a whole lot of time on uh, user experience testing. Release that crap <laughs> and fix it in the next run, right? I, hey, I can respect it, especially when they're cheap, right? $270 for the, the That's true. starting out price. Yeah, that is really cheap. Um, what else is cheap, guys? Talk. AMD graphics cards. Huh? Huh? Hold on. Hold on just a second. Yeah, uh, a little bit more. There we go. AMD graphics cards? There, yeah. That's yeah, perfect. Yeah. We gotta use. We gotta figure out how to work those presets out too. Um, so, the good news: AMD Radeon graphics cards are uh, at the prices they're supposed to be at, and maybe even a little bit lower. Finally, finally. Uh, when did the uh, R9 290X launch? Yeah. That was in October, November. You were the one who went to Hawaii. Yeah, but that was so long ago now. Yeah, I'm gonna say it was October. I'm gonna go October. So since October. And all the iterations of card releases after it, AMD's issue has been uh, coin mining, altcoin mining, and availability concerns, and prices way over MSRP. I remember we talked about the 290X selling for $900. Yep. And that was crappy. Uh, but now you can find, well, let's see if it's still the case, uh, R9 290Xs on Amazon for, look, $557, $562, $499. $499! That's that's actually really that's impressive. Sweet for Is double D. It, wait, what did I call Johnny Shee? Wait a minute, that's a hundred fifty dollars. Four ninety nine. Wow, that's an R nine, an XFX custom cooled R nine two ninety X for four ninety nine. I think AMD has a problem the other direction now. They have too many graphics cards. <laughs> XFX. Yay! Oh no, I think the R nine two ninety five X two is still really highly priced. Let's oh. see. Oh yeah, still fourteen ninety nine. Well, but that's what it's supposed to be, right? Like that's its MSRP. So uh, the good news is. 
you know, you can get a 290X for apparently 499 now. You can get an R9 290 we found for 379, 280X for 289, 280 for 249, which is a price drop, 270X for 199, 270 for 169. So all those numbers I rambled off. Hopefully you understand what graphics cards are. Otherwise, I just said a lot of random numbers. Um, so is anybody, you know what would be an interesting article to do? No. Uh, go no. buy a random 290 or 290X off of eBay that you know have yeah. that you know have been mined and do some stress testing on it and see how well they hold up. Yeah. Yeah, actually that brings me up to this. Um oh, wait, hold on. Nope, not that one. Nope, not that one. This one. So if you look at uh, eBay and you search for R9 290X, you find a lot of these cards now. And it's not the, the quality or the quantity. There says there's 462 results. Um, somebody retweeted back at me when I tweeted about this link that, oh, yeah, well, there are 700, in 700, 780 TIs for sale. But yeah. the issue is, uh, what is the price variable, uh, the price um, variance. variance between what they're selling for here versus what they're selling for on Amazon or Newegg, right? So if you look at this XFX... It's going for 365, right? And it's got uh, nine hours left, but this one has six minutes left. And it's a used <laughs> Sapphire R9 290X, and it's going for $300, and it has one bid. Okay? Hmm. That's, that's probably half or almost maybe two and a half times less than the guy paid for it probably at the time, would be my guess. Um, I'm going to keep this tab open because I want to see what it sells for before the end of the show. So why would he be selling it? Well, he's selling it because it's a slightly used and in great shape. I have three of these for sale and can combine shipping for you. Weird. So if he has three of them, you probably you think he was using them for mining? Yeah, I do. Okay. So he bought them. And I think the power bill came in. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. But okay, so I'm just trying to visualize the process here. Like, why wouldn't you continue to use them for mining? Because at some Asics. point, at some point, um, the, the performance you get per watt of GPUs for whatever coin you happen to be mining yeah. becomes... Less. So you're saying he moved to those? Than the, than the, he, he could I'm have making seventy nine dollars a week with these cards. Yeah. Next week, I'm making seventy two dollars a week with this card. Next right. week, all right, I'm down to fifty eight. Starting right. to sweat. So as, because, as soon as that you know drops to a certain point, um, you know, and maybe these are just people who are like, I want to get into the craze of coin mining, and they bought it. and They go, this is kind of dumb. So I'm going to sell it. So probably what's even helping, not only is catching up on supply, but the fact that. Now they're Correct. starting to flood the market. Right. Okay. Right. And, it, and it's not flooding it as in like there's 3,000 of them on eBay. Right. But when but you can get a, them for that cheap, there's a con, there's suddenly a Newegg and Amazon can't sell them for $650 anymore. Yeah. Right. Which is what they were trying to do. So this is good news for gamers all around. It's mm -hmm. not particularly bad news for AMD until what AMD, this is what we always said was going to happen. The, the coin mining price ranges were going were gonna to cause a great sales for AMD, but they're not, remember, they weren't getting the extra money. Yep. They were just getting the money of what they had, you know, expected to sell at MSRP or SEP or whatever they call it. Um, anything over that was going to the reseller. Yeah. Now what happens is everybody who bought in months and months ago and who, for mining purposes and is starting to sell it back, every card they sell on eBay is probably a card that's not being sold at Newegg or not being sold at Amazon. And so now AMD is suffering for that because now they have restocked Mm -hmm. They have maybe increased production of chips, you know, back when this first started happening four months ago. And will it balance out or will it, you know, will it affect AMD in the long run where they have to, like, maybe drop these MSRPs a little bit further? We'll have to see. So it's an interesting time to be – if you're a if you're a buyer, go on eBay. See what you can get. Are yeah. you comfortable buying a card that was – used for mining maybe because nobody's going to tell you that it was aside from that the only thing you miss out on is the games that were bundled yeah that's yeah kind of and a, right now the games that you get with these bundles are not spectacular they're not great anymore they're not they're they're still a little bit outdated um that yeah, would, that would be an interesting 7 365 at 100 percent yep probably at 95 c right especially if you're getting one that has the reference cooler yeah 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 but uh what you're saying that they're going to be closer to burning out because... Well, I mean, just think of what the caps have gone through on there. Uh, and know. here's the thing. You've got to check check which manufacturer you buy because sometimes warranties are transferable if you're not the first buyer. And sometimes they're not. That's true. XFX has like a... a, like a they call it the double lifetime warranty, which means if you're not the first owner, you yeah, can still get. get a warranty with it. Other companies may not do that. So if you buy one of these off eBay... 
and it does crap all over the bed on you, and you're not you don't have the receipt of original purchase, they may not let you do the RMA. Yeah. So think about that before you buy it. That's one of the risks you take when you buy a uh, 290X for three hundred dollars on eBay. Hold on, let's do a refresh here and see. We're still at three hundred dollars, and there's two minutes and forty three seconds left, guys. If you're so watching we can still live, talk about it for another two minutes and oh, thirty seconds. Oh, it's in Montana. It's close to Josh. Oh, oh hey, Josh. hey, Josh, get in your car. There, it's in Bozeman. B O Z E M A N. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, that, that, just right above Yellowstone. <laughs> That mm. card probably never went above 40 C. Probably <laughs> never did <laughs> since he bought it in October. All right. Well, let's move on to the next story. We'll check back with the final sale price of that 290X is, and we'll base uh, AMD's issues on the final sale price. <laughs> uh, MSI launches AG270, AG270 2 PC and 2 PE gaming all-in-ones. Jeremy, do you know anything about these particular machines? Well, they're awfully big 1080p monitors. I'll tell you that. They're 27 inches. Yeah. But if you can get over that, it's sort of an interesting little product. I mean, it's you know it, the usual way that a system and a monitor goes. It's a laptop. You, so you get a GTX 780M or sorry 870M hmm. in the 2PC or an 880M in the 2PE, which uh, is more or less a, a 680 generation. Although in the case of the PE, it's actually got eight gigs of frame buffer. What the hell is, for? I don't know, <laughs> but. Well, it does have uh, HDMI out, so you could run multiple displays on it. Does it? I think it has HDMI in as well. I I was looking at that earlier, and I could not honestly find a spec to tell me whether that yeah. was exactly what was going oh, yeah. on or not. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not positive, but it makes sense that it would. Yeah. Um. So you could run dual displays on it, but at the same time, like I don't know why you need that much frame buffer. But hey, they seem why to not? do that on notebooks a lot. Like. Yeah. Uh, they, what was it? There was a laptop we had in that had, like, MSI. it had four gigs per GPU, eight gigs total. It was two two cards and two GPUs and SLI, and it was on a single 1080p screen. I don't see well, why it would we, need that we much. Got, we got that MSI in that was a 880M with eight gigs of VRAM. Oh, we did. Oh, we had that one. Yeah, that's display. right. That's right. Yeah. And that's the one that had a battery boost that uh, Steve's testing, I think. And, yeah. and how you're supposed to output 4K on that, I'm not quite sure with those plugs. But hey, <laughs> yeah. why not try somehow? At 30, 30 hertz is how you're supposed yes, to do it. Yeah. 30 hertz. <laughs> Boo. Hey, you but know yeah, what? apart from that, uh, they both come with i7s. Uh, the higher end one is a 4860. Uh, the lower is a 4700. Either way, uh, it's you know a fairly decent gaming level processor paired with that uh, graphics card. You're talking pretty decent, and one of the things that I kind of like is that although it comes with two gig storage, you can put up to three MSATA SSDs in it, which this follows is, the same design that they did on their notebooks that we saw at CES. Yes. What they what did they call that kind of uh, like Super, Super Raid Two? Yeah. Super, Super Raid, Raid. Two. So and, and hopefully it supports that. They don't specify that again, yeah. but at the same time you would kind of assume I'm sure that's what BIOS it update yeah. it could. So you're talking about a pretty serious gaming computer. And a 27 inch 1920 by 1080 display, which hopefully doesn't get too warm. How much? How much? How much? Uh, and are we wireless pay connectivity for it? from uh, Bigfoot. So, Bigfoot. Why not? How much dollars? I'm sorry if you have to ask, you're not allowed to know. <laughs> 499 that's one, that's one of those. <laughs> MSI is not talking about price at all. Oh, which great. Is a little worrying. If, uh, you know, my guess is this will be a Computex launch. <clears throat> yeah. And, um, that that'll be where we get that information from. Hey, you know and what? I've I've worked on twenty seven inch ten eighty p monitors before, and let me tell you, it is a godsend for people like my parents. They're yeah. in their seventies, and having the big monitor. We have the the monitor that Alan and I are looking at right here underneath our our main camera is a twenty seven inch Samsung ten eighty p monitor that I bought um, because it is pretty far from us. Yep. Right. So we wanted to be able to have big pixels. So we could see what's going on, uh, and it's actually a really nice monitor. It's an IPS it, yeah, it's, or it's a PLS. I'm not, I'm not making fun of Kali in the uh, in the uh, in the chat room, and not no. saying he's a 70 year old person. I'm just saying that it was an ASUS. I bought it for a couple of years ago. They're ecstatic about it. I worked on it, and I didn't notice big pixels. Yeah, I thought no. it was solid. I mean, it really like it's it most it, like if you get a good panel, you're going to get a good panel experience, right? Like that's if your age is under the size of this monitor, you probably won't like it. If it's above it, you probably won't mind it at all. Uh, well, 
the 4K Mario experience, crap. The 4K experiences we've had have been well, interesting. Not all of us oh, have let's, had Let's that go back and check on our – oh, the bidding has ended, and I believe it is $300. Somebody just bought a Sapphire R9 290X for four – uh, f- four gigabytes for three hundred dollars. Dang, three seventeen forty five. And if you want to like, buy, new. yeah, seventeen dollars shipping. And if you want to buy that new right now, it was uh, uh, f- five five hundred dollars, four ninety nine, or ex- that was the one we saw. Yeah, it was was five hundred dollars, but probably like five fifty. Yeah, would be the range, right? That's that's a that's huge. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. How many times a day has this happened today? Like, how many times has there been a car going for like three hundred bucks? Probably a lot. Right, and that's. If I'm AMD, it scares the crap out of me. Yeah, because For you're not least... going to be selling all that many new cards. Yes. Get, so it's like you get the bragging rights up front that oh look we're selling them they're flying off the shelves and yep. then you know three months later like here's uh, one there's here's a 290x with 315 buy it now. Right, you don't have to wow. bid on it. Right, here's one that's up to 255. Right, and it's still got 12 hours left. Like that'll probably hit 300. Buy it now, 600 bucks. I don't think so, pal. Ain't gonna happen. I could get two for that. Can't we? Can't you like uh, search by? You can do completed yeah. listings. You got to check it on the left side. Don't you have to log in to, to do completed yeah, listings? Do. I'm not doing any of that. Oh wait, no. Here you go. Show only completed listings. Let's see. Whoa. You said first. So this was. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that guy was smoking. Three hundred two ninety five. Oh, red means it didn't sell. So. There. Oh, red means it did not sell. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that price, honey. So two ninety five <laughs> sell. None of these sold. Wait, Four. scroll up. Let, no, scroll down. Scroll down. Down. Oh, Wait, oh, that, that picture. Holy oh. moly. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think maybe he was coin mining, guys. Maybe. Just a small amount. He might have. Maybe. So how many of these was? What were he selling? Wow. Great deals. Go fast. New. Open box. <laughs> open box. This open is box. One video card only. Heart touching rocks up. It was heart. It was oh, it, the box was opened and then it mined coins for three months and then. <laughs> yeah, but it's just but the just open barely. box you got to worry about. Yeah, uh, four hundred. So this. And was, if anyone's got any handy eBay passwords, you know, shoot them our way and we'll pick some up. Some of these probably have battlefield codes. So look here, three oh <laughs> look three oh six, three oh nine, three oh five, three thirty five. Yeah, so they're going for a little over three hundred bucks. Yeah, three fifteen, which is a little over half of. Retail that two seventy five. That is the stock cooler, which I wouldn't really wish on. But anybody. like this one's not. But well, maybe it might be. I don't know. Two seventy five. Three. Yeah, but about a price adding on the third party cooler is still you're cheap. Yeah. 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 Two sixty five. Two sixty five sold for. Damn. I wish that was me. <laughs> it, it could be you. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on. Um, Pioneer respects space two with two hundred fifty six gigabyte Blu ray discs. Sweet. What Nobody's we, gonna buy them. No, so, I'm, I'm gonna be all over that. Four K. I mean, how? What's gonna be an economical and easy way to do four K video that's two and a half hours long? A with hard drive. Good audio. A hard drive. Netflix is going to ship hard drives. No. Well, they'll, st- they'll stream. They're gonna they're, stream for There isn't a Blu-ray standard for four K yet, so they're not gonna ship Blu-rays. Well, no, but obviously, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, what are, what are we looking at here, Alan? This is a, it's uh, this is just is it multiple layers? Yeah, I believe oh, it's eight. Eight, isn't it? Yep, <laughs> that's a lot of layers on an eight, optical disc. Eight thirty-two gig layers, how much, and d- uh, how much is a reader for that? Obviously, they don't exist yet. I guess. Uh, like one that can no. read eight layer discs. Well, they're getting out those old Kenwoods back again with the seven lasers, <laughs> the TrueX. <laughs> <laughs> I have well, those in my basement. Read anything. I have in my basement, I haven't said what I'm going to do with it, is the original yeah. Toshiba HD DVD player. Sweet. Like, I think I'm going to bring it in and, like, do a dissection video of it because it weighs, like, 20 pounds. Like, I don't think I'm kidding. Like, it's – and I, I think it has a Pentium 4 processor in it. Is that right? Does I that sound so. right, Josh? Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, really? the, yeah uh, it had to boot. the standalones, not the ones that you pot. Correct. To, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's got a Pentium 4 in there. <laughs> <laughs> I want it. I'm going to take it apart. It's going to be amazing. Save the older sized heat sink for Mori though. No, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean it it's it's I I think it literally weighs twenty pounds. I think it literally does. We can note the CMOS battery placement. Well well yeah, we'll find out where the battery is located. Yeah, see so in the last paragraph here. Yeah, what's it say? As uh, as Scott put together, he did some rough calculations on cost per per gig mm-hmm. of the media. And yep. it's actually uh Blu ray discs and DVD Rs are around the same. 
this is assuming they can ship these for what they're saying they can ship them for. Right. And then those two uh, just so happen to be getting very close to hard drives. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. So granted, fifty dollars for one point three terabytes of storage. Yeah. And that's for Blu-rays. That's today. really close to. I mean, you get a couple terabyte hard drive for like what seventy, eighty. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. I, I never. I don't think I've ever written a Blu-ray disc. I have never. Uh, because have. when they first came out, they were like twenty dollars a disc. Yeah. And I was like, well, this is, this is dumb. I did that once with the CDRs. writers. Were cheap too, weren't they? The writers, I think, were cheap. <laughs> yeah. I think they were. Not no, when they, they first came out. They were like 120 bucks. So, well, well, when they first came out, there's 300 bucks the for fact, a yeah. the Blu-ray fact that you could, the same price. If you say if they if they were 200 dollars, the fact that it was the cost of 10 discs, maybe less, right, is less. Yeah. It, it puts it's it makes the media more expensive in my mind, and not the device more expensive. But like, I never once used it for backup or anything like that because it's like, what? Am, I don't want to waste 20 dollars on this data. I yeah. will probably never ever use again. Not only that, but it takes a very long time to write. Yeah. Oh, it does not. Oh, okay, how long does it take to write a full disk? Uh, you know, we were doing uh, accounting software backup on uh, Blu-ray discs because at the time they were like three bucks a disk. Uh, uh-huh. I would do 20, 20 to 25 gigs in about 20 minutes. Did okay. the accounts get upset so when, 20, you, only, when so you told them you were only backing up ones and zeros? So it's 20 minutes for, <laughs> for a burn, for a full disk. Yeah. Okay, I wouldn't say that's horrific. That's no. not that's not horrific, no. but but if you're going to buy one of these and you're backing up like what? I mean, you're going to buy one of these to back up like a lot of stuff, right? Like say you want to do a backup of like your 50 gigabyte I, I would I would I would go with external hard drives being a better option for this, but I, I don't know. I don't know. Somebody's got to make disks. They still make tapes. If you, if Why you needed, not make Blu-rays? If you needed to well, only write There's a reason they make tapes. 185 terabytes. On a, a, one of the Ultriums coming out now. Maxell. Really? Are all the tapes made by Maxell? Yeah. No, it's Sony that's doing that one. Oh, I liked Maxell. How much is that writer? They're doing, well, God only knows, but 148 <laughs> gigs per <Yeah>. square inch. It's <laughs> a lot of gigs. It's this insane. is not a home user. But I yeah. like Maxell. Nobody, Ken gets the joke. I don't think you know, somebody else says, yeah, thank you. <laughs> is it live or is it MRX? <laughs> uh, oh, well. All right. Uh, Google may be buying Twitch. Twitch, the uh, streaming video game service, the same Twitch that is embedded in your Xbox One services, <laughs> your PlayStation 4 services. Oh, no, I didn't even think about that. And in, like, GeForce Experience and all that stuff, right? So here's what's interesting about that. We don't really – it's not specifically hardware-related, but it's interesting to think about, um, like, the copyright ramifications of this. Yep. Google and YouTube are notorious – I trust me, I know – of, like, flagging every possible instant where you – jacked up and there's a song that is maybe sampled in somebody else's song which is what exactly happened to us yep um for like copyright infringement and we go uh no we actually bought the right to use this song go f yourself and they go yep yep yep, nope you're right but you have to go through this process twitch on the other hand uh doesn't give a damn right you can go on there and you can play your games and you can run spotify and play all the music you want yeah in the background and they just kind of go like hey we're just streaming the stuff out this is not our responsibility they, they take the stance that companies used to take a long time ago of hey we're just uh you want to you want to talk to those guys here's their contact yeah. information you can get a hold of we're them. just the conduit but if twitch goes into youtube obviously at some point maybe not immediately but at some point they will have to fall under the same uh, uh you know umbrella of copyright and all of that will be gone and so know, well, you, maybe it might be one of the like one of those okay so google bought ways yeah. Right. Waze hasn't changed a single. Yeah, but they're not doing anything illegal. <laughs> right. This is technically illegal. The fact that I can stream to a thousand people while playing my Spotify playlist is illegal. Right. True. It's a It's a performance. I'm obviously singing in the background as well. So. Yeah. If Josh so was singing, it's derivative art. Right. If you, yeah, if Josh was singing, it would be parody. Um, <laughs> you know. Josh doing anything is parody. It's just weird. It's weird to think about. Like we stream on Twitch. Right, we stream on our own services. We stream on Twitch, uh, and I don't. We don't usually play anything back that would be. 
I think it's still kind of questionable. Down. Like if you have a radio going in the background, and like yep. But I mean that know. happens all the time on YouTube. I mean, like that that that's still illegal. You can't have a radio playing in the background of a restaurant without an ASCAP license legally. Well, he's talking about like if you're taking a video of something happening at a restaurant of your kid, yeah. and there's music yeah. playing in the background, or you're or you're taking a video sucks. of anything, yeah. and, 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 and they they pull it be, for that, right? And yeah. and that's. It's not really gray area because it's already been like they just take stuff down, right? Um, but it's it's crappy, and I and I hate to see that happen to a community like Twitch that's kind of blossomed around all this other stuff. So True. we'll we'll see. Routers claims that the Intel CEO, while talking with them at uh, Maker Fair, Routers Reuters Ro- Reuters <laughs> Reuters, <laughs> Sorry. Reuters. Uh, says this Broadway, time I am not making up words. It's Reuters. Yes. Uh-huh. Says Broadwell I we were PCs. were the ones drinking, Josh. Says Broadwell PCs will be for sale by the holidays. Uh, Brian Krasanich, who confirmed the company's upcoming Broadwell architecture processors using the new 14 nanometer process technology, would be on store shelves in time for the holidays. And he said, quote, I can guarantee for holiday and not at the last second of holiday, which means not December 23rd. He didn't say what holiday. That's true. It could have meant New Year's. <laughs> I guess that's that's could have been Easter. Could have been Easter. <laughs> Hanukkah. Uh, they did say holiday 2014 somewhere in the story, so maybe not so much there. Um, Just some holiday. In this is this is not really like big news, but it's a clarification, a little bit more detail uh, than what we had before, which was second half of 2014. Yeah. Uh, and I had I if I were to have been had a gun held to my head and said you have to guess the date, I would have said shipping to OEMs by Christmas on store shelves in January, but they are doing better than that. So Broadwell CPUs will be shipping uh, and available on store shelves. My guess is in October, November timeframe. Uh, and <clears throat> what that does not mean is we don't know if they're talking about notebooks only, uh, all in ones only, or if they're actually talking about desktop socketable, like user replaceable parts. There's no way, right? Meh. I don't think they get the socketed Broadwell parts out this year. I think they focus on mobile uh, and get – because he says PCs. Um, so they partner with Apple and ship a 12-inch Retina MacBook Air. Uh, I think I think that w- – I think that's – I don't think – well, first of all, I don't think he would do that if it was only Apple. I think you see notebooks, maybe all-in-ones because they're based on the same hardware essentially on shelves – November time frame, but I don't think you get the socketed Broadwell parts this year because we haven't yet got Devil's Canyon, which is the new thermal interface Haswell yep. parts. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think if those release in June or something like that, and they're going to be wanting to sell them more than just eight yeah, months. Yeah, like to, to suddenly have a new part out in four months, even though we'll use the same motherboard platform, right? So the, the, uh, the, effect of uh, all that you know is is somewhat muted right it's not as difficult of an issue but well and it sucks that they're competing against themselves right now they need to compete against somebody well <laughs> they only got one choice right now except at the lower end in which case they're in for a good fight yeah well it's like you know backing the k6 penny of three days yeah it's kind of the same thing i mean amd couldn't do anything and so what's the point in intel really pushing the envelope and uh throwing all this you know R and D and process development money away to to make the next jump faster. You you monetize what you've done, and I think any good company that I mean, sure, it sucks for consumers, uh, but hey, yeah. I mean, if if uh, anybody from Intel is in the chat room and wants to comment on <laughs> the story, <laughs> I, I, feel free. I, I saw it. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's that's like confirmation. It really is. It really is. Uh, <laughs> TikTok push. Indeed, indeed. I, uh, yes. Uh, let's talk about Surface Pro 3, Jeremy. What did Microsoft announce yesterday? Uh, well, a more a, a better product that nobody is interested in still. I, I mean, the, the, the usage of a Surface still eludes me, to be perfectly honest. But I got to say that this particular third try was significantly better than they have in the past. And they're going for the purely pro Windows 8.1. Uh, it is going to be powered by Haswell Core i7. Unspecified, probably going to be one of their lower power models, uh, obviously. But at the same time, 
it's a Core i7 powered tablet. Not bad. Yep. The screen is a little weird. It's 12 inch display, but it's 2160 by 1440. So it's a three by awesome. uh, three by two aspect ratio. So it's that's the same ratio as the iPad, right? Uh, iPad more four or less. Three. iPads four three. Okay. Yeah, four mm. three. So what they're claiming is about six six percent more viewable area on it, and I could believe it. Uh, except when you're running, you know, movies that are in 16 by nine or another or 16 well, by 10, yeah, in which sure. case you're going to get a lot of black space. But at the same time, it does sort of make sense to me for usability that a little bit extra screen uh, real estate is going to be nice. Uh, they do say that you can, there is a, a docking port you can get, which will output 4K video. Uh, I would like to see that on an i7. Uh, and not just pure sarcasm on that, I would also like to see an i7 be able to do that. But sort of what they've done, uh, and I will paraphrase uh, another uh, hardware reviewer, they put their keyboard behind a paywall. So you can buy this, you can buy this tablet for 800 bucks plus because that's what the reviewed edition cost. Right. And if you want to get the docking station with it, which is going to add the keyboard, which is going to add uh, connectivity for display for USB, you're going to have to fork out more money. This is, you know, it takes away from the idea of paying $800 for a tablet that's supposed to be fully functional like a laptop. So I don't know. It's but it's, it's a really tablet. it's an interesting product, but I do not see the market for it. Just like I haven't seen for the past two. Models. The problem the problem Microsoft has with this is its price, right? So here, um, Ken linked me over to the Surface website. Now you can actually pre-order it as of today. Uh, the 128 gig Core i5 model. It's Core oh, i5 4300 is a thousand dollars. That's um, it's ultrabook. Price. It's an ultrabook. That's spec. insane. It's an ultrabook spec. It's not really that far outside of. Let me see if the rest of the tech specs are What's the connectivity on this thing? So on the tablet itself, um, you're getting, looks like AC wireless uh, ports, Mm -hmm. um, full-size USB 3, micro SD. one single USB. Headphone, mini display port, and a cover port. I mean, that's for a tablet. For a tablet, that's okay. Um, For a tablet of that price... But it, 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 it's there's no other tablet really yeah, like this, like, right? There's no, no fair enough. There's no other. It's it's not an high end Windows tablet, right? And you get way more functional functionality than you do out of an iPad, right? Um, where do we have? Does it have the uh, accessories? That's what I want to see, right? I want to see the. Uh, does it have that same keyboard? That's type like... Surface Type Cover yeah. Pro thing. This is what it is. It's, so this is yeah, another one hundred twenty nine dollars. Um, so it doesn't really add. Well, you get an extra two or three USB ports. Uh, you get video out on what? No, not that keyboard oh. dock. Oh, oh, sorry. That's, oh, oh, the, oh, that's, that's just purely the keyboard. That's not even the dock. I don't. Right. I don't so somewhere it. there's a dock for this thing. Okay. I'm not. Looking I think at you right could get spot. away with using it without the dock. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, remember the, the original I mean, Surface that I own has? It's just the tablet. I don't want to chat now, Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> We're busy chatting <laughs> to other people. We're busy. Leave me alone. I don't understand. Would you like to buy our hardware? Really, yeah. we're a hardware company now. Where is that dock? Yeah, I don't see honestly, it. M- M-Lock does make a good point. Uh, with the dock, you can get 4K resolutions. Oh, yeah. Okay. Claim. Well, this has this. Even the tablet itself has Mini Display Port output, so you should be able to get 4K out of it. Yeah, I but you're think. off the HD 4600. Like, yeah, but if you're not running games, you don't know what the processor is. If you're not running games, you'll be able to do 4K on the desktop. We do, yeah, okay. we do no know what problem. the processor is. It's an i5-4200. It's an i5-4300. Man, I hope that hinge is strong. Yeah, so it's a revolutionary laptop. You can see that it's magnetic stability, right? So you, before you had only it's a couple a full of different friction, instances. friction, multi-position hinge. Yeah. Positions, now you, it's free So flowing. what happens if it's almost flat and then somebody... Well, they, they've done, they did examples previously with the other one where you couldn't like break it like they does it just flex the rest of the way or something or i don't just, know maybe i don't know but they they did it where like they this is a well-built machine like we I have so. i have the surface rt and i think i have the regular surface 2 uh over here i don't i wish i could see where the dock when's the last time you pulled them out oh never yeah yeah well i mean i use a laptop right and uh when he pulled it out of the box yeah pretty like, much oh open box slightly used slightly, uh, slightly used not used for coin mining <laughs> Um, I, the dock adds some interesting stuff to it as well, but I don't see that listed here. So, uh, and you, if you get the five twelve with the i seven, you're looking at two thousand dollars. So that My is a little goodness. bit steep. But it's, if it's, it is original Ultrabook pricing, 
And yeah. okay, it is almost a fanless build, so it's, I can sort of see that, but still. It's super wow. thin. It's, st- it's still a sexy device. But it if really you're going to charge ultra stylus, pricing, nice throw, stylus. Throw in the keyboard. I would be curious on that SSD, especially speed. It's got to be PCIe. Uh, what it's going to be using. It's probably an interface. Oh, it's got to be PCIe. It's probably, no, it's probably SATA. Right? You think? And I do have <laughs> to <laughs> mention uh, people did call me out on this. It does come with a stylus. It does come so with a stylus. So for okay. certain applications, it it's it has it has like functionality really nice like it has if you hit the button on it it will automatically bring up the OneNote app and then if you what is it Ken if you like double tap it it saves it and moves it off or something I think if you tap it again after you write notes it will send it up to OneDrive yeah so like it, it's it's supposed to just be better integration of writing yeah. on on it which has never really worked for me it starts at seven ninety nine if you want to get the sixty four gig Core i three uh, and then it goes up to nine ninety nine for the more reasonable, I think, one twenty eight. With the uh, what the what sixty four gig, uh, you do have four gigs of user space available to you. <laughs> after oh, no, no, you, you just get Office three fifty nine, and all the programs are on the cloud. Three fifty nine. Three fifty nine. It's not been it's not very. Quite 364. It's, it's dropping. It's dropping by the dock, a week, man. But it's there. And they're not even talking about the dock thing. The dock must be not available at the, the same time. The good news is, in about six months, you'll be able to buy this for about $700, if you judge on Surface Pro price and fill <laughs> two generations. Yeah. That'll yeah. be a great deal. Yeah. We'll I want to try one of these. I wasn't invited to the sweet reviewer event to take one home, but I do want to try one. We have a Microsoft store someplace. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so that was Microsoft Surface 3 Pro. And our last news story of the day, uh, maybe not particularly... I don't, I don't know anything about this. I'll ask Josh. AMD okay. is rumored to be working with Asmedia on SATA Express integration into their chipsets, I guess? Yeah. You know, the last really big, impressive jump in chipsets from AMD was probably, arguably, the SB850, because that was their first, it was one of the first widely available SATA 6G, uh, and it had six ports of that. It was reasonably fast. It was not as fast as what Intel was able to put out later, but it was decent, and it was solid. It was a big step up from, like, the SB600, which was, as far as I'm concerned, total garbage. I mean, absolutely. I mean, you, you've worked on those before, and they were... Do you remember installing Win 7 on one of your first Fiona machines, and it took literally about 40 minutes? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it would just it looked like it froze. It just there were issues, and so the SB850 solved a lot of those issues. But then they added USB 3.0, and that was through uh, licensing the NEC uh, Renaissance Renaissance. Yeah. It's for Renaissance uh, Sauce. unit, and it seems like they're doing the same thing with SAT Express, except they're doing with As Media. So the, uh, is it is this them trying to make sure they're keeping up with what Intel's doing on the chipset side? I mean, yeah, I mean if they can get good licensing deals from these guys and and trust me as media is is going to be happy to license out anything they have because it's yeah. uh, these chips are cheap. When you put them on a motherboard, they're a yep. couple of yep. bucks a piece. They're not big money maker. The the margin when you figure in R&D and production Margins are, are razor thin. So if they can license out the technology to some guy like AMD, AMD makes tens of thousands of South Bridges that then they pay royalties on. That's just going to be easy money for As Media, and it's good for AMD because they don't have to you know get more develop people it. over into the chipset division and develop that. Because as you know, they've cut a lot of engineering. You think they may need those engineers in other places, is that what you're telling me? (laughs) They could really use those engineers in other places. All right, fair enough. All right, that's going to uh, wrap up the news stories. We need to get into our really super exciting hardware software picks of the week. We're going to do a slight color adjustment. Uh, Settle on I don't know what color Uh, to pick. How about that? That's good. do white? Orange. There we go, orange. That's that's different. Yeah, it blends in with the background here. So uh, my pick is a classic. Classic, I tell you. This card is an EVGA GeForce 8800 GTS. It has 640 megabytes. That's enough for anybody. Of memory, more than anybody could ever use. It runs at 576 megahertz and has a uh, memory clock speed of 1700 megahertz. A little bit under the six gigahertz we run at today, um, but it's, it is there. It has a 2048 by 1536 maximum analog resolution and a 1536 by 1600 maximum digital 
resolution. You mean 2560. What did I say? Yeah. yeah. Something else. 2560 by 1600. Yeah, that that thing. And um, this part is available from eight, eight, uh, eight different sellers on Amazon for as low as $50. Used in very good condition. Probably not used for coin mining. Um, <laughs> I would probably buy from the guy Literally with one the more stars than the zero than the one star. Uh, so somebody's selling one of these for four hundred dollars. Ships from Ohio is that me? original box oh, installation? Mm, that's CD. us. That's us. Sorry. It's a collector's edition. I would like to know when they put this up for sale. Their username is AMDK7. Nice. Are you oh, sure that nice. isn't you? Hmm. Who could that be? And it's their one hmm. item. Okay, Anybody buy buy showing us right now. A card for three hundred ninety nine dollars. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you thought nobody's tried coin mining on these. This is the secret. Yeah. Oh, come on. Everybody has done at least some folding on those, and they know. Look at that. It's got an SLI bridge. Only two generations into the new SLI. It's pretty exciting. It, it's pretty I, I pretty got exciting. one of those from Gigabyte, and guess what it came bundled with? An SLI bridge? No. Supreme Commander. Oh yeah, that it's was nice. Game. Had the big Supreme Commander guy in the front. It's funny, it was one so of the massive boxes. What would See, be the, what, my my eighty eight hundred GTS? What would be the analog? What would be the analog to the eighty eight hundred GTS in today's product stack in terms of flagship? To would this be the seven seventy of today's? Correct. Would, would be the seven seventies. Uh, okay, well, this has one six-pin power connector on it. So keep in mind how GPU power consumption has changed uh, in relation to this. I bet this was what a 200 watt part maybe maybe yeah, maybe 150 150 because be it's got one plug yeah so it'd be 75 and then 75 yeah yeah this would probably be a 150 and your card that you have there has two pc express by 16 225 oh. baby 225 two boom what a beast what a beast so 756 that's, megs of memory that's my hardware pick is a uh what year would that have come out in let's see 2008 that recently, so right? <laughs> really? I would have said no, earlier. 2007. Right. Sorry, I still would have. Because I, I joined you that. the year after that this came. Out. Scott says you can compare it to a Tegra K1. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, <laughs> that's a fair I point, Scott. The Tegra K1 has more stream units. 192 versus what? Uh, 128 for this one, and I don't know how many units had. I don't know. I didn't 96. Up, I didn't look up the specs. I didn't look them up. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You don't have them memorized? I, hell no. Um, all right, let's go to Jeremy for your pick, your interesting pick for this week. It is not a video card. No, although it kind of looks like one if you squint right. Kind of? No. Well, you know, an upside down one with solar power on the back. Why not? <laughs> Everyone hates mosquitoes, right? Yes. I mean, some people actually die from mosquitoes, but the vast majority of us in North America just hate the buggers. Yeah. Uh, a guy came up, uh, I believe he's based in Egypt, with an instructable for 10 bucks. You can put together essentially what is a solar-powered aquarium pump that, as you can see from the picture, uh, just starts to aerate water so that the mosquito larvae will drown and you will never see another bloody mosquito around. Yeah, stupid mosquitoes. It, it's ridiculously simple. It's like a 555 timer, some transistors, uh, a tiny little bit of soldering, a uh, 450 milliamp solar cell, and an aquarium pump. Uh, the Instructable is up. It is ridiculously easy to make. And, you know, it's just brilliant. Huh. If, if you live somewhere with standing water, you throw that in there and you're going to cut the baby mosquitoes off. Of course, if you scroll down to the very bottom, Ken, there is a very a better way of doing it, which is killing them with lasers. But that is not ten dollars. So it's but a it's great awesome. afternoon uh, if you want to do a little bit of uh, an electronics project by yourself with your kids, with the community, and you can just do it, and you're not going to have to worry about uh, the various surfacants that we use now, which you know some people hate. What if you could actually write data to, to mosquitoes and read it by lasers? That would be awesome. <laughs> there Minnesota go. would be the data capital of mosquito the world. Net. <laughs> Yeah. Nice. The only problem is that they're not big enough to deal with Winnipeg. Uh, they they would have to be much larger lasers. Fair enough. So hey, great electronics project. You're saving lives, and you're going to get better sleep at night. You don't have to sleep with that net over your bed anymore. No. Josh, what do you got for us? I don't know. I forgot. It's an LG monitor. It's been a long time. It's been since the beginning of the episode. I know. 
That was five I've beers ago. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, hey, guess what? Josh picked a monitor. There's only I 10 like left monitors. I wish I had more monitor, but I don't. I've got plenty. Actually, that is really wide. But two ninety nine. Yeah. And I could scream that out in Johnny Shee fashion. Uh, I resolution of twenty five sixty by twelve ten eighty. Ten eighty. Is that, is that so by Essentially, nine? it's like it's, it's like dual nine. monitor ten eighty. Wow. Well, almost, but not quite. Uh, yeah. But <clears throat> you know, a single card can push that. You get some of the surround slash affinity uh, feeling. It's yeah, inexpensive. Easy to set up. Any single card above, you know, like a 760 IPS. or an HD 7870 is going to be able to push that. You get kind of affinity feeling without the line down Exactly. The a little bit wider. And you, ins- instead of having like two panel affinity when the basal is right yeah. in the middle, basil. you don't have that. Basil. So. Basil. B-A-S-I-L. Basil. That's a All safe right. view. Alan, you're last. So uh, these guys, which I'm using one for the podcast, mm-hmm. but these are the Shure E... It's a hearing aid. SE. It's not a hearing aid. Oh, I thought it was not a hearing Not that old. Aid. I'm sorry. Uh, mm. SE 315s. You kids. Um, so I got a set of these a while back, and then I had them. I was using them in the moving truck. Uh-huh. Because the moving truck is very loud, and you sure. can't hear anything. Right. It's good. It's important for you to not hear horns or other traffic no, patterns. No, no, no. I didn't so, care. yeah, no, I understand. Go ahead. Um, so, and then I go to unload, you know, get out of the truck and park in front of the house, get out of the truck, and uh, they caught on something, and they were in the street. Okay. So like the next morning, and it rained. Oh, but you didn't know this happened. No, 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 no. And then like the next morning, I come out, and uh, so aside from them sounding very, very good, Mm -hmm. they continued to sound very good after being left on the street overnight Mm -hmm. in the rain, and I believe a car ran over (laughs) this one. No, the other one, because there's like some (laughs) cracks. There's some cracks in like the the housing, but these are the SC three fifteens are two hundred dollars. Yeah, the two hundred bucks. Uh, you yeah. find them a little bit cheaper. Um, detachable cables, which came in handy for you. Yeah, the detachable cables come in handy uh, because I wanted to use the right earbud, but we only have audio on the left thingy here on the channel here. So I was Do able really? to. Well, I because I, I on both. because I'm using the other oh, cable okay. that has the, it's meant for a phone. Token ring ring. So did so you pick them up and and, yeah. and lick yeah. them off? Gotcha. Did I do did, did I do what? Did, did you pick them up and lick them off after you found them on the street? Yes. Got to clean them. Got to clean them. Yeah, I clean them. <laughs> clean like all my babies. Like all my two hundred dollar babies. <laughs> well, it's, I, I did. There was there was just that moment, like when I turned around the back of the U-Haul and just saw short earbuds lying in the street. Yeah. That I just purchased. I was kind of like, well, yeah. Damn. But they worked, and still work good. And uh, even the two fifteens are pretty good, and they sell the. They sell the 215s in a kit with the other cable mm-hmm. for the phone with the mic and the volume up and down and stuff. Um, so it's it's handy. You can actually swap the cable out. you know. And if you ever do mangle the cable or your dog eats it or right. something, you can just get another cable for huh. really cheap. Huh. Yeah. All right. Um, well, that is our 301st episode. We uh, I, I forgot we were supposed to count down. This was actually 299 again. Oh. Yeah. Two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. Every oh. episode is gonna be two ninety nine, so that Josh can continue to do that. Uh, thank you for joining us. If you watch this live, pcpro.com slash live. Uh, I hope you had a lot of fun. Uh, and if you want to watch us live, we record Wednesdays, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. And like I said before, pcpro.com slash subscribe. You can go there and fill out our little form with your name and email, and we'll send you a note when we record the show when we're getting ready to record the show so uh join us there and of course if we want you to share the podcast grow the audience pcper.com slash podcast is where you can do that you can download the mp3s you can find the rss file so you can subscribe to it uh you can find uh, links to our youtube channel there where we post the video versions which are obviously more fun because you get to see the colors change behind me randomly now because we've got an <laughs> rgb uh, dmx controller that works uh and you can see the new set if you're listening to us and you haven't seen the new set you should probably do that because it's awesome. It and is. Really, and we really like it. Uh, and we have some more stuff to do, but most of it is things you won't actually see. It just makes it makes it easier for us. So um, so what do you think being here now? It is uh, much easier. It's, it's, a t- it's a totally different thing. It, it is a totally different thing. It's yeah. actually different for me, too, um, because... Because Alan actually talks? N- yeah, well, he kind of has to now because well, I'm, I'm right sitting here. right next to him. Uh, and I can Watson. I don't know what that means. And you, and you probe you're, him. You're Sherlock. The, the and I'm, I'm oh, okay, gotcha. I'm Watson. Oh, he's not uh, Big Blue? <laughs> I, t- yeah, I was no. trying to figure out if he was like, making a joke about him being like a supercomputer, and I, was, <laughs> I didn't. I, 
I'm just going to knock no, him down. I don't know that many answers. Uh, but having a conversation with somebody over Skype is more difficult than not. That's so true. the more the, the fewer people we have on Skype, the better. Yeah, so Josh yeah, so and Jeremy Josh, are going to get pushed out now. We're so, all moving yeah. in. Jo- we're all moving in. It's just yeah. going to be the three of us. Alan has plenty of bedrooms. <laughs> I do. Um, he's got a basement that's that's half finished. I, yes. Right? He's you, got you guys are fans. all welcome there. Yeah. Not at my place. At Alan's place. Reiterate again. Um, well, shit. Why am I paying rent? Yeah, I know. You could just live there too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. You guys could all live there. Basement. <laughs> we would need more bathrooms in the office. Uh, <laughs> we will be would, back. Would next. my bedroom have a locking door? No, yours is. You actually sleep on the futon in the living room. Yes. So everybody can watch you. <laughs> is it uh, Teflon coated stain guard? It will be soon. Scotch guard. Yeah. You're going to yeah. get you one of those headphone amps. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh my God, she's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will be back next uh, week, next Wednesday, for another podcast. Thank you, guys. I'm Ryan Trout. I'm Jeremy Helstrom, and part of the GTA nice. 800 Club too. Wow. Mine's only uh, only the the GTX, but I'm Josh Walrath, and I'm Alan Malentano. It's funny because that was an XFX card that Josh has. Yeah. They don't make yeah. NVIDIA cards. <laughs> I got EVGA. No, they don't. So.